Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices. Let's stand and take a moment to safely greet one another. Presenting at liturgy is Father Wilson Smith and preaching is Father Johnson. Please join in singing our gathering song, hymn number 692, Christ Be Our Light, hymn number 692. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be holy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our hearts and minds to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord.
With a steadfast heart he will not fear. Open-handed he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His might shall be exalted in glory. The just man is a light in darkness for the upright. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the nearly 40 years since I was ordained priest 
In addition to nearly 12 years as a U.S. Navy chaplain, I spent 20 years ministering on major university campuses. And among some of the college-age Catholics, I witnessed the tendency to take measures to protect themselves from the world. This often took the form of associating only or mainly with like-minded students, those who shared their beliefs, their values, and outlook. This was a concern because it seemed to me that it did not very well align with the life and the teachings of Jesus, the missionary travels and preaching of St. Paul, whose feast day we celebrated last week, or with the renewal documents of the Second Vatican Council. Jesus, St. Paul, and Vatican II all practiced, valued, and encouraged engagement with the world, a transformative engagement, and proclaimed a belief in the missionary nature of the Church, which looks outward in hope. When, as we hear in today's Gospel reading, Jesus challenges his followers to be salt and light, he had in mind that the goal of their efforts would be transformative, transforming first themselves and then others, and then the community in which they lived. And that meant engaging with the world, not escaping from it. Like the relatively small amount of yeast added to flour and other ingredients to make a loaf of bread, Jesus was calling that small community of disciples to transform the larger society of which they were a part. The varied histories of minority cultures shaping and transforming their much larger surrounding culture is an important window through which to read and appreciate today's gospel message. As just one example, this is true of the many Hispanic American immigrants whose culture has rapidly influenced the culture of the United States, not by power, not by wealth, but by their labor, their marriages, and their cooking including the salsa, guacamole, and chips, so much of which will be consumed at next Sunday's Super Bowl. The tortillas and tacos and enchiladas and empanadas and tamales, which many of us have become so fond of. Well, that attests to the flavorful presence and influence of this growing community in the United States. And I would add to the mix their faith as well as their commitment to family. And much can be said of so many others from Africa, Asia, South Asia, the Philippines, Eastern Europe, to name just a few. They bring so much richness and diversity and transforming values to our American culture. In fact, that worldwide community of Christians continues to thrive, even today, is due in part to that initial diverse and powerless group with whom Jesus first shared himself, his message, and his ministry. It was to these that Jesus announced the good news of the kingdom, and of whom he said, you are salt, you are light, they became what has been described as a contrast society. The images of that budding community as the salt of the earth and a radiant city set on a hill affirmed that the church is intended to be a contrast society. That is, one that lives a lifestyle that is frequently out of sync with the ways and the wisdom of the rest of the culture. 
And the point of this contrast is not merely to be different, but to be transformative. The church today must continue to be a contrast society. If we, the community of people who profess to believe in Jesus, are not living contrasting lifestyles, if we are not salt and light, then the words of Jesus make it very clear that we are no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. But despite this harsh assessment, it's also clear that Jesus made every possible effort to prepare his disciples to prepare us to recognize and accept the grace which God gives to live the life to which we have been called. This grace continues to energize our flavoring efforts and our every attempt to be light in the world and to exert our influence for good. In his midday prayers one Sunday, Pope Francis posed the question, what does it mean for the church, for us today, to be disciples of Jesus, the Lamb of God? Being disciples of the Lamb means not living like a besieged citadel, but like a city placed on a hill, open, welcoming, and supportive. It means not assuming closed attitudes, but rather proposing the gospel to everyone, bearing witness by our lives that following Jesus makes us freer and more joyous. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We turn now to God, asking that the light of Christ shine upon all those who are in need. That we, the Church, will work diligently to bring food to the hungry and shelter to the homeless, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all who confess discipleship with Jesus will firmly and clearly reject all expressions of hatred, bigotry, and group supremacy, and work together to bring about greater justice for all. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. You richly bless the people of our parish and of our archdiocesan community. Give us grateful hearts and a concern for the needs of others and move us to respond generously to this year's annual Catholic appeal. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. On this world of consecrated life, 
We pray that those in religious life may have the grace to persevere in their commitment and continue to serve with open hearts and willing spirits. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the sick will experience the healing power of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Paul's father, Charlie Martin, and all who have died will know the light and peace of the kingdom of heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Yolande Sanvi and all the intentions we hold in prayer for silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. You are the source of all life, O God of mercy and forgiveness. Hear the prayer of your people and inspire us with the life and deeds of your Son, Jesus, the light of the world, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Friends, this weekend we'll take up our monthly sharing parish collection. So we'll take up two collections. The first time the baskets are passed will be to receive your regular Old St. Mary's offering. Then the baskets will be passed again for the sharing parish collection. There are special blue envelopes in the pews for that collection. Those of you joining us from home can mail in your contributions to the parish office or donate at oldstmary's.com by clicking on the Give button. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks. Our presentation of Gifts Hymn is number 696, Love Burn Bright, number 696. Christ our light illuminate every path that leads to you. Give us grace, Lord, guide our way. Love and bright. In your light, your every day, every way we follow you. Grant us peace to journey. Let us 
to witness faithfully. Brothers and sisters, in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of his Spirit, you gathered them together to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you, held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, that your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, give me Oh 
God's holy reign. Blessed with all the sad, for comfort is yours through sorrow and pain. Blessed with all the meek, for you will inherit what long was denied. Hungry, thirsty ones, your longing for justice will be satisfied. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, Oh 
Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and one chalice, grant, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a few announcements. Thank you. I want to thank you again for all who donated or made a pledge to the annual Paulist Father's Appeal. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity yet to make a gift, you can take the appeal envelope from the tables in the commons and return it next weekend, or you can always do it online at paulist.org. Next weekend, we'll all be invited to make a commitment to this year's Archdiocesan Annual Capital, and that funds programs and ministries of the Archdiocese of Chicago that not a single parish on their own or even groups of parishes could manage. So in today's bulletin, there's a brochure describing that appeal. Uh, so we also want you to just take note of a couple things in the bulletin. Uh, one, I want to invite you to an upcoming book study. It's a book called Racial Justice in the Catholic Church by Father Brian Massingale. Uh, I'm going to lead the group, but it's really going to be a discussion of this text. Uh, so that's in the bulletins, also online. You can pick up uh, that book on Amazon or from the publisher, Orbis Books, anywhere. But we'd love to have you join us. It starts February 18th, that's a Saturday, at 3 p.m. So you could join the book group and stay for Mass if you'd like. But please do consider, that's an important topic. And next weekend, there's an opportunity to support the Palestinian Christian families of Bethlehem with the purchase of blessed art hand-carved items. And also, it's that time of year again. This comes down from, this was ordered to us from the Vatican to make sure we, we announce this to everybody. Girl Scout cookie time. It is Girl Scout cookie time. Uh, the cookies will be on sale in the commons after Mass. If you didn't have a chance to buy them before Mass, this is your opportunity. Uh, and I know our Girl Scouts, they really appreciate our support. So uh, please partake. Uh, uh, finally, we have uh, something going on with the school. We are a blue ribbon school. And so I want to have a speaker come up and tell us about the blue ribbon, the blue ribbon appeal in a special way. Mr. Dylan Alley, will you please come up and tell us about that? Thanks, Dylan. Good morning. Knowing I'm the last thing between you and Girl Scout cookies, I'll keep this to about 15 minutes. So, um, My name is Dylan Alley. I'm a parishioner at, this, uh, at the parish. been here since 2012 with my wife, Anne. Our daughter, Josie, graduated from OSM last year, and our son is a current seventh grader. So I've got two quick questions for everybody. Hopefully they're non-controversial. First one is, who here is for having the best teachers possible? and programs designed to support their professional development and commitment. Yeah. Thank everybody. And who here values a campus that is safe, pure, and conducive to learning? Yeah. I think those are things that we can all agree. Who here loves turtles? Oh, Sorry, that, love that was for Stu. Um, oh, so anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, the vision of Old St. Mary's came together in 2004 by a group of committed and determined parents who really bootstrapped the whole operation and wanted their children to be able to attend a Catholic elementary school uh, in the burgeoning South Loop. So our shared purpose has always been to prepare students to be productive, responsible, and impactful members of the world community. As you know, four years ago, the U.S. Department of Education recognized OSM for that effort and named us a National Blue Ribbon School, for which we're proud. So four years ago, also, about that time, some of those same founding parents came together and said, let's do something special. Let's start this Blue Ribbon Annual Appeal. And it's meant to help the strategic priorities of the school that tuition dollars and the operating budget cannot cover. So as co-chair of this year's appeal, along with Shannon Matthew, we're reaching out to ask for your support. Since the launch of the Blue Ribbon, Blue Ribbon Fund four years ago, we've come together as a community to raise more than 750000 U.S. dollars to continue building on that exemplary teaching and learning that our school was founded on. So for 2022 and 2023, we remain committed to doing the same. Our goal is $200,000 this year, and it's going to uh, be directed to two major initiatives not covered by tuition. The first is continued support for our teachers through activities to reward their personal commitment and professional development. This is tuition assistance for graduate school. It's training uh, for professional development. It's also um, retention and signing bonuses, right, so that we can try to remain as competitive as we can 
uh, in the current environment with salaries. The vast majority of the funds will go to teachers. The second most important thing here is financial vitality of the school with an emphasis on increased safety and security of our students. Financial vitality is a fan fancy word for we need to fund our security guards. So we have a full-time security guard. We hired a part-time security guard in October. They coordinate the drop-off and pickup in the morning, which has been much less chaotic this year than in years past. They also keep the campus environment safe and secure for visitors like yourselves, for our staff, and importantly for our children. I don't think I need to tell you uh, about how important that is in, the, in this day and age. So thank you for your support and prayer and reflection as you consider our, our ask, whether it's $5, $50, or $5,000, we're grateful for any and all contributions that you as a parish community and school families, including some alumni families I see out there, um, you know, tell your friends, use some positive peer pressure, we really appreciate it. Um, to make your donation or pledge, you can visit osmschool.com backslash giving. And finally, I'll leave you with this. I know that we ask a lot of you all the time, right? Father PJ talked about how this is not a, a self-service thing where you show up and you're constantly served. We're asking for your engagement to make this a vibrant community. And I know that in my own personal experience, sometimes that investment of time, treasure, and talent requires a lot of mystery of faith, right? You, it, the fruits of that labor isn't always obvious, but the fruits of this labor um, are everywhere, right? There are the hundreds of young people walking these halls and walking that school uh, five to seven days a week, most months of the year. And we have an opportunity to make an impact by making sure they're taught by the best teachers in the city. So I'll leave you with this. Isaac Hecker, founder of the Polis, once said, we shall know more, love more, and do more if we be more. So thank you very much for your consideration. Uh, thank you, Dylan. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Hi, right, friends, the Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 67, This Little Light of Mine, hymn number 697.